Hello everybody and welcome to a very short video on using an Apple extended keyboard on a modern Macintosh. Um, I'm not a big Macintosh user, I do use one occasionally uh, these days. I don't really recommend their modern hardware, um, but if you are in the position to have to use one, um, this is probably one of the better keyboard options, especially considering modern Apple keyboards are very bad typing experience and they fail left and right. Um, and they have non-replaceable batteries in them. Um, this is an Apple Extended Keyboard 2 from the, the early 90s. It is a um, ADB keyboard, um, which is the old school like PS2 standard Apple used to have. Um, it uses um, Alps cream dampened switches, so they got a little bounce action on the bottom out. It is a linear keyboard. It is very quiet, so it's usable in office settings um, and, and also the only Apple keyboard I know of with a adjustable foot height adjustable foot um, these I don't think any Apple keyboard before or since has had this um, they are a bit large but I use a trackball these days I don't really use the rodent any um, the mouse because it frees up more room for the keyboard um, it does have a numeric keypad. I use that a lot. You may not, but whatever. Um, modern mechanical options for the Mac are kind of limited to like Unicomp DAS, uh, DAS, DOS keyboard. Um, if you like IBM buckling springs, get the Unicomp um, made, in, uh, made in America. <laughs> yeah, that's important to you. Um, uh, but they, they're the only two I really know of that have a Mac keyboard layout. Um, these are fairly common. They were, you know, used by every school system in the United States for um, for the decade of the 90s. So you can find them in junk shops and everywhere for pennies. Even an expensive eBay auction for one of these is probably 30 bucks. If you're paying more than that for it, you're paying too much. There is a Apple Extended Keyboard version 1. Um, visually you can distinguish this by the Apple logo being down here by the control key instead of up here. Um, that is more expensive. It's got um, linear Alps salmon switches in it um, and that's the color of the slider. They're a very sought after switch and Apple was the primary user of those back then and so a lot of people sadly get them and gut the switches for a personal computer PC Windows layout keyboard that they're building, um, and they're also more expensive because of that, um, because there's a few of them on the market. Um, people want them for the switches, and um, and you know there's fewer and fewer because people are gutting them. So um, these are a lot cheaper, a lot more justifiable <laughs> as a daily driver. Um, they feel good to type on. They're quiet. Um, now using them on a modern computer does require an adapter because they nobody has this ADB anymore and hasn't for almost 20 years. Um, the first option that's really out there today is the USB Wombat. Um, this is uh, handy because it's bi-directional. You can go ADB to USB for a modern keyboard or an old excuse me a vintage keyboard on a modern Mac, or you can go USB keyboard to ADB to um, to a vintage Mac, so you can go modern keyboard to vintage Mac if you need it. Kind of a handy thing to have in your toolkit. Uh, it is a bit big as you can see, um, so daily desktop use, eh, not a huge fan of it. It's also expensive. This dude's like 70-ish, 80-ish dollars. I'll post a link in the description. The other option that I've been using for a few months after discovering it um, is this Dracware um, ADB to USB 2. This is the package it came in. Um, ADB to USB uh, I said two, but it could be USB one or whatever. Um, it's micro USB on this side and ADB on this side. It's not much bigger than the ADB connector itself. Um, it has reprogrammable firmware and there is an application to do that. Um, it's 25 bucks and, and it has a 3D printed case. I think it's literally made by a dude in his basement. Not that I mean that in a bad way, it's just kind of a cottage industry. If you were uh, inventive, you could probably even build that into the keyboard. I just use it externally. You can tape it up under your desk and um, have it out of the way. Um, the only bug I when I say that loosely is that because um, that I have with this is that because this has a locking caps lock switch, it's some kind of Futaba switch, I think. If you hit the caps lock key repeatedly too fast, you see how the light gets 
out of sync with the state of caps lock. Um, and that's because this is a latching switch and that's hard to deal with here in this in the in the microcontroller. But if you use caps lock like a caps lock like a normal person, you know, you hit the button, you type your thing and you, you unlock it, it's fine. It's just if you start going at it really quickly that it will um, that it'll get into that state. Not a big deal. Not many people use caps lock. Eh, anyway. So um, in, in conclusion, I would definitely recommend this Dracware. $25 adapter if you're looking to use one of these. These keyboards are so cheap and so plentiful. There's, uh, you know, you know, if you're environmentally minded, you know, the carbon tax has already been paid on this. It's been made. No use in letting it sit in the landfill or recycling center and go to waste. Put it back to use on your modern computer. You can use it on a PC if you want. I think there are better options for a PC keyboard than this. Um, but if you are partial to these switches, I can understand that. Um, but if you have a Macintosh and you want a decent keyboard, um, you know, this is probably, I think, one of the best keyboards Apple ever made. AEK1, or Apple, AEK stands for Apple Extended Keyboard, in case, you know, I don't want to get buried in acronyms. Or the AEK2, which this is the number two here, um, are both fantastic. They're both out there. Um, you know, just takes a little bit of finding. The only downside is these do yellow. Uh, Apple used ABS plastic, and these will yellow like they're getting a spray tan. You can try to retro-bright it. Um, but I'm not a fan of that because that can damage the plastic, so I just kind of live with it. Uh, if you find one that's yellowed behind your, beyond your liking, skip it and keep looking. There are so many of these out there, and so many of them in fantastic condition that, you know, there's no use getting one yellowed just to live with it, unless you want that kind of um, uh, look. Uh, the keycaps will not yellow outside of the spacebar. The keycaps are PBT plastic, and so they don't yellow, or at least not as bad. Um, the space bar is ABS like the case though, so it'll kind of yellow to match the case. But that's really the only downside to these. Other than that, they're fairly well made. They've got a metal mounting plate. They're fairly tough. They're probably going to outlast, you know, you'll still be typing on this when every butterfly switch keyboard Apple has made is in the trash can because it's dead. Those things are terrible. Um, even if they didn't fail left and right, they are just an awful, in my opinion, an awful typing experience. This is a much better typing experience if you are, uh, spending a lot of time either programming or writing or something of that nature. Um, this is well worth the time. And plus, you know, I, I like the aesthetic. I like the old school kind of look to it. I like the font. Um, I, I like the lock lights. It just looks neat, I think. So, um, you know, that's my opinion. Um, if you like this type of content, let me know. Give me a thumbs up or a subscribe. Uh, if you don't, then don't watch it. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but uh, because I am shamelessly ripping off uh, Cryosan, I forget, is that how you say his name? Thomas Rand is his name, but he has a YouTube channel reviewing keyboards because I'm shamelessly ripping him off here. Uh, up next is a uh, typing demonstration of this keyboard just so you can get a feel of the sound and stuff. But uh, again, fantastic keyboard. Um, you know, save it from the junk pile, save it from the trash can, put it back to use, clean it up. It'll serve you well for the next 25 years, probably, and, uh, you know, and, and enjoy it. So, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.